So the first thing I need to do is pick a piece of tube cane to start with. So I'm going to store these until I'm ready to use them and then I'll pick out a few to choose from. Let's see if one of those is good. What I need to do is look for a nice straight line as you rotate it, a nice straight sides and also a nice round shape. Mm, that's not bad. This one's better. So the sides are more even and the shape is a bit rounder. So that's a nice good shape to start with. And then the first thing you need to do is then split this into three parts. There we go. So we have a piece which is far too small, so it goes in the bin. And then we have three pieces. And then I look, look to see again how straight they are. Now this one is a little bit uneven, actually. It's a bit wonky, so that has to go in the bin as well. That one's nice and straight, nice straight lines along the grain. I think that, that can be our read for today. This one's actually a little bit wonky too. So, so out of one piece of tube cane, there's only one, one read potentially. The first, first stage is actually to then clip it to the right length. So now that's the right length. So the gouging stage takes the thick, the thick inner part of the cane, this part, and just whittles it down so it's much thinner. This is about 1.5 millimetres thick and it comes off in these sort of very thin shaves of wood. And then to the profiling stage. So the profiling stage takes the, the cane on this metal sort of easel. So it's like this. And two pieces of cane. So this has just been gouged and then this is after being profiled. So it takes this middle section of the cane off. Profile piece of cane. So that's the profiling done. Now for the shaping. So I take my shaper, take my knife, Good, so that is the shaping. Then after the shaping, I need to I need to soak it a little bit. Take these mats. Okay. Then I need to score some lines down down here. Yeah, start by putting putting the wires on then. Okay, so then this is just cotton thread which I've soaked. And then we wrap it around. And then because I've done the scores down here, when I squeeze the side, it should just open. So it opens this side. Like that. And then I put this thing called a mandrill down.
then it actually needs to dry. So I put it on my handy drying rack here. Put it on here and let it dry for a few days, 24 hours or so. However, let's assume it has been drying and carry on. So then take that off. <laughs> I'm going to line up the blades again, I'm trying to line up this middle collar, which is good, get the shape nice, good, 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 and then back with the wires. And then the other wires, so the bassoon reed has three and the contra bassoon reed has three wires, so... And then I'm just forming the tube here. This nice round bit of the pliers, just making a nice round tube. There we go. Finish it off properly. We glue and then take some thread, and then we make a nice little pattern. Do a little knot at the top. And then put some glue over the top just to seal, protect the cotton thread from water. It's a bit messy, but there we go. And then there we have it. A reed finished reed and then to play on it we just have to clip the tip on this little machine here so bang on the right length 35 millimeters clip and there we do so this is the final stage the tip so this does the, the very tip of the reed, and we like to have this thinner so that when you play the reed, it vibrates and the sound comes out more easily and with more flexibility. So you can play louder and softer, etc. So this just works on the very top third of the reed. do both sides, so it only does one side at a time. And there we go. So you hold up this up to the light, you can see that it's got these little windows here on either tip and a little spine down the middle. And then That's the beginnings of a sound.